My next guest says low rates have also brought about the highest level of home affordability in nearly four years, with some states seeing their lowest payment to income ratios in decades. For more, let's bring in Andy Walden. He's director of market research for mortgage data and analytics firm Black Knight. Andy, it's good to have you back. A very rustic setting today, which I uh, appreciate. <laughs> um, but so where is the housing affordability at record highs? Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, nationally across the board, the highest affordability rate when you take incomes, interest rates, and home prices in three and a half years, dating all the way back to 2016, when you start to look across the country, it gets a little spotty and sporadic, right? Areas that have seen incomes keep up with home prices in recent years and have seen more moderate levels of home price gains in recent years are seeing the highest levels of affordability in 5, 10, 15, in some cases 25 years other areas as little as two years. So some differences depending on where you're looking at across the country. We're showing a map. It shows Arkansas, Louisiana, West Virginia, Kentucky, Maryland, Iowa. Are people able to take advantage of this affordability or is it only happening because of the dismal economic situation? Yeah, and that's, that's the big question, right? I think the saying is uh, housing is the most affordable when no one can afford, a, uh, afford it, right? And so, I mean, there certainly is some offset and some headwinds driven by um, the, the elevated unemployment rates out there in the market as well. But for those homeowners that are still fully employed, that are able to go out there and shop in the market, you have about 10% more buying power than you did at the same time last year. And how much of that is just being translated into higher home prices? In other words, you know, all that low mortgage rates are ultimately going to do is mean that more people can access housing, push those prices up, and you kind of come out with no difference at the end. Yeah, that's the big question, right? And if you look at it dollar per dollar, you're saving about $65 per month compared to what you would have last year. You'd like to see homeowners put that money in their pocket. As you mentioned, that's not typically what happens. You typically, if you look over the last eight years, as interest rates have fallen, home price growth has increased. Now, the good thing somewhat, I guess, about this time is we do have that elevated unaffordability level. So you've got, you have some headwinds there to home prices as well. So we may not see the home price growth that you otherwise would have seen.